for years I feel like I've been taking crazy pills. This is Tim. This is New York Giants Straight Talk. Powered by Online Big Blue LLC. But those weren't crazy pills. What I was seeing the last couple of years actually happened and has been happening. It's just people have stopped taking the crazy pills, or some fans have, and are kind of reverting and coming on over to this side of the cult. Because the things that we have been saying for years, the things that we said about last year, the things that we said about preseason, the things that we said about training camp, they're, they're all coming true. And I wish, and I keep saying this to people because I got people leaving me um, message DMs and Twitter and comment section on YouTube like, you, you've been right this entire time. I've had people that are, that are Daniel, staunch Daniel Jones panty boys tell me you were right. And I would rather be wrong. I would rather be 110% wrong about this team, about this organization, about this talent. And I've had a, I've had a clear head now. I've had a chance to, to, to separate myself from the game yesterday and, and come into Monday anew and take a look at this from not a, a 10,000-foot level but a ground level and kind of see where this team is at. And where it's at is you, you don't have a quarterback. You don't have an offensive line. You really don't have a true defensive end. You're still lacking in linebackers. You have two rookie corners, and your safeties aren't playing that well. And I've said this about the rookie corners. Trey Hawkins. Trey Hawkins has the, I think he has the most completions against any corner starting for most yards and completions percentage and all that, blah, 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 blah. But we know this. When you put two rookie corners out on an island without a pass rush and expect, and you expect them to excel, bad things are going to happen. When you're not getting to the, when you're creating almost zero pass rush from your vaunted first round pick in Aziz Ojolari and, and of course, King of the Almost Sack. And, and then you get throw Dexter Lawrence in there, who had another. Who, Dexter Lawrence had a bad game. You're not getting. You're not getting to the quarterback. You are leaving your rookies on an island. And I've said this before, and I said this in training camp. If you have the thought process, if you are wink, that you are going to have two starting rookie corners on the outside and put a Dory Jackson in the slot, it's going to be a Pearl Harbor moment. It's going to be bombs away. And the problem is Miami's just too fast. Oh my God, the speed of Miami when 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 they when he went by Xavier McKinney and Xavier McKinney just gave I, I, I'm I, I'm going to talk about Xavier McKinney for a moment too because he gave up he gave up on that play he stopped running he didn't hustle that was bush league that was quitting and I can't stand for that. He's got all the talent in the world, Xavier McKinney, but he dogs it at times. And then when he gets beat, he still dogs it. The one thing I can say when I played in college is I did not have the most talent. I tell people all the time, I probably had a pinky's worth of talent. But the difference was I never quit. I never quit on a play. I never dogged it at any moment in time. I wasn't Rudy, but I never dogged it. You, you have all the talent in the world, Xavier. You're playing for a contract. And you dog it. And Xavier McKinney and and Isaiah Simmons just aren't that good right now. They're just not that good at what they do and what they're trying to accomplish in Wink's defense. It's kind of it's kind of scary if you think about it. If you step back and you think about it for a minute, they're just not that good. And I and I get worried that this is a this is a precursor. Because right now, the last two draft classes from Joe Shane aren't looking too hot. And we're going to get into the offensive line, too, but they're not looking that great. Outside of Banks and maybe a player here and there. But he's right now, he has swung and missed on 90% or 80% of his draft classes. And we talk about the fact that his claim of fame right now that everyone is so crazy about is the fact that all he's doing is re-signing Gettleman guys, Gettleman draft choices. You could see the gap between Miami and the Giants. You could, you could see the talent gap. And, and finally, the Giants force three turnovers, the first three of the season. 
And Jason Pinnock takes that one back 102. And, and honestly, I thought Bobby O'Karake was going to get, but we're going to get to O'Karake in a minute too. But he also got a fumble in there. And there was a forced fumble, of course, by Xavier McKinney, which was recovered by Kayvon Thibodeau. There was also a Kayvon Thibodeau sack, which meant nothing as always. <laughs> uh, but like I said, when, when, when Xavier got beat for that 76 yard touchdown sprint, he took a bad angle and then he dogged it. That's not the way to play for a contract. The defensive talent is not there. I've said it a million times before. You do not have run true run stopping defensive ends. You don't have any defensive ends that understands the concept uh, of, se- of setting the edge and holding the edge and holding their assignment against the run. We don't have an OC human Yora. We don't, we don't have a Justin tuck. We don't have a Michael Strahan. Hell, we don't have a Keith Hamilton. Kayvon Thibodeau for all of his worth should be a good run stopper. And I'm not really seeing it. Leonard Williams should be a good interior run stopper. I'm not seeing it. Dexter Lawrence again has played well at times, but again, he, he disappeared. I'm not seeing it. Ashawn Robinson, not seeing it. I'm, I, I'm just, I'm just not, you know, Nacho, not seeing it. You're getting gashed on the, you're getting gashed in the interior run and you're getting gashed on the outside run. And when we run into anyone with speed and it's a foot race, we don't have the speed to keep up with anybody. Not from Xavier McKinney, not, not for Isaiah Simmons. We just don't have, not for Bobby O'Karake. We just don't have the speed. Karake had 10 tackles. Four of them were solo. And I've said this before. If you look at an off the ball linebacker or a middle linebacker, any linebacker, he should always have more. He should always have more tackles. Than a than solo, I mean, excuse me, than assists. And Bobby had four solo tackles, the rest were assists. That tells me he's just piling on at the end. If you have more assists than you have solo tackles, that means you are not leading the point of attack. We overpaid. Listen, let's be 100% honest. And I did a video about it. We overpaid for Bobby O'Karake. We did. What, what the market dictated for an off the ball linebacker, we gave him more. We gave him about two to $3 million more a year than he is worth. But that's neither here nor there. That's, 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 that's just not there. I mean, we don't need to worry about that. What we need to worry about is the fact that the defense is not gelling at all. There is no continuity in this defense. Again, you look at the you look at the turnover battle, you look at the time of possession, and you sit there and you say, "How the hell the Giants lose these games?" Because the other week too, they they won the time excuse me the time of possession. This week they won time of possession and turnover. You look at this and go, "What is going on?" They had twenty Miami had twenty two first downs to the Giants fifteen. Giants were, let's see, the Giants were five for 17. Miami was only three for eight on third downs. The Giants ran 68 plays to 50, only 54 plays. They ran 14 more plays and still only had 268 yards to 524 yards. You look at this, but then you get down to the nitty gritty. Pass attempts, we're not going to get into, but we're going to get into yards per attempt. Giants 4.7. Miami, 9.7. Giants only 85 rushing yards, 220 for the vaunted Miami Dolphins. Penalties were even. Red zone attempts. Giants 0 for 2, 2 for 3 for Miami. Time of possession, Giants 35 minutes to 24. (sighs) So you look at some of these statistics and you say the score should be a lot closer, but it's not there. It's not a lot. It's not, it's just not close. And then, like I said, you look at the, you look at the tackles, you know, Isaiah Simmons did have seven tackles on nine total, which tells me he's leading the point of attack. Same thing with Xavier, Xavier McKinney. He had seven solo out of eight. How many tackles did we have for a loss? One to their eight. There's a problem right there. You have too many people who are not leading the point of attack. You are not getting any tackles for loss. You're not getting in the backfield and you're blitzing consistently. 
And listen, so many teams are going to have a problem with Waddle. So many teams are going to have a problem with Tyreek Hill. But when you make Eli Apple look like an all pro, there's a problem there. There's an issue there. There is an issue with Wink's defense. I, I don't think that I don't think there's a simplification that needs to happen with this defense because it's not that complicated. If you watch the way they play defense, it's not that complicated. Your problem is you got two rookies out on an island, no pass rush, and subpar at times safety play, and really no help in the linebacking core. Outside of a who's 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 the next big giant linebacker? Let's take a look. Well, I guess you can call Isaiah Simmons a linebacker. Kayvon Thibodeau to me is a down is a down lineman. Carter Coughlin had a tackle, and then Ward had a tackle. It's more of a defensive end. You need linebackers. The Giants going back to the 50s were built on linebackers. The Giants in the 80s were built on linebackers. The Giants, even during the Super Bowl run, they weren't big names, but they were built on linebackers and defensive ends. We don't have that. Our talent level is not there. Now, if we get into the offense, oh dear lord, <laughs> must must we get in the off? Must <laughs> must we get into the offense? <laughs> must we do this? the The offense itself is just broken. I don't know if Dable is calling the plays. I don't know if Kafka is calling the plays. I don't know who's calling the plays but the offense is just broken. Your quarterback is broken. Now, literally not even figuratively 14 for 20 for a one nineteen six yards sack six times. And listen, there were a couple sacks. There were that were the line's fault. 100%. There was also a couple sacks that were Daniel Jones's fault. We've talked about this before. When you send out Eric gray, you need to shift the protection to that side. You could clearly see he didn't do that. Daniel Jones did not do that. A fifth year quarterback should know to do that. I've said it before. It is a romper room offense. And then you compare it to the education of higher learning offense of the Miami Dolphins. You have players. Waller came to life when Tyrod Taylor was in the game. Tyrod Taylor comes in, goes nine for 12 for 86 yards, almost a yard and a half more average than Daniel Jones. You could see the difference in the pocket presence. You could see what it means to have a professional quarterback step up into the pocket and not into the rush. The problem with Tyrod Taylor is Tyrod Taylor is 147 years old. He's not going to, he's not going to make these plays. He's not going to continuously make these plays because he's, he's an older quarterback. But you could see the pocket presence. You can see the awareness. You could see the pocket collapsing, and you can watch him roll and roll out to the right, roll out to the left, step up into the pocket, look down the field. Why all of a sudden were the Giants looking down the field with Tyrod and not Daniel Jones? And I mentioned this before. Why were the majority of Tyrod Taylor's completions in the middle of the field and not on the sidelines? The majority of Daniel Jones's completions do not come in the middle of the field. They come to a lot of check downs and to the outside. Why all of a sudden did we figure out, Hey, we can throw the ball into the middle of the field. It's okay. Or is it just the fact that Dable and Kafka have no confidence? I said this about Jason Garrett. I said, Jason Garrett is running the offense. That's being dictated by Joe judge. A Joe Judge offense was run the ball, short passing, ball control, keep the other team offense off the field, and try to score. Try to score, you know, at least 17, 20 points. And do not let Daniel Jones beat you with the big mistake. Kafka and Dable are Kafka and Dable are running the exact same offense. Except they've added motion. I love it because everyone's like, all they run is curls and slants and outs. I remember hearing that about Jason Garrett. Well, Jason Garrett, I used to hear, we don't have any motion. Now we have so much freaking motion. No one's fooled. There's nobody fooled. We look like the fool. Everyone wants to fire Bobby Johnson, the offensive line coach. 
Hire Bobby Johnson. And I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. He, Bobby Johnson didn't bring, bring in Bredesen. He didn't bring in Glowinski. He didn't draft Joshua Zuda. He didn't, he didn't bring in Matt from Connecticut. He, he didn't bring in a lot of these guys that are here that maybe we just overjudged the talent that we had. Joe Judge did it his second season. They overjudged the offensive talent they thought they had. And now they're paying the price. They're, they, this, I said this before. This is very, this is not Shakespearean. This is very Judgian. You overestimate the talent that you have and your ability to make the, have this talent improve. I'm going to tell you right now, Bobby Johnson's going to get fired. But Bobby Johnson is a sacrificial lamb because of the fact that we've said this a million times before. You fire the, you fire the coach. Then you fire the coordinator. I mean, you fire the position coach. Then you fire the coordinator. Then you fire the head coach. Then you get rid of the general manager. It's the giant playbook from the last 12 years. And if you're doing that, you need to then fire the special teams coach and you need to file fire Patterson over on the defensive line because they gave up 222 yards. And guess on how many, how many carries 23 an average of 9.7 yards. And I know 76 came on one run, but damn. Even their backup ran for 65 at 6.5 yards. There's something very wrong here. Here's what's wrong. And I've said this before. And I'm going to say it again. And I said it during training camp. And I said it during preseason. Everyone looks like a world beater when you're playing against the all shorts team. Everyone looks like a world beater when you're playing the cone team, the all cone team. It's not until you step on the field against real competition. Do you know what your team is? The Daniel Jones offense got a series in Carolina. And I was like, Oh, we're done. (laughs) We scored a touchdown. We're done. And there was problems in that one drive as well. The defense did play an extended period of time at times during that, during that preseason. But I don't think the talent is there because I said it before. You take two rookie corners and put them out on an island without a pass rush. I've been saying, I said this all through training camp. You're going to get wrecked. Football 101, you don't put rookies out on an island and expect good things to happen. And what the hell was it with the Eric Gray experiment? Can someone please send me a memo about that one? Matt Breida, who's been in this league for years, actually ran with heart, ran with some passion. You kind of kept feeding them the rock, but we decided that we're going to run the ball with Eric Gray, who went 12 for 25 for 2.1, and his longest one was a nine, eight-yard run. He also had a fumble again. He fumbled again. He has good vision, but he has no burst. Same thing in college. Good vision, no burst has a tendency to run out of bounds and avoid contact. Can we just stop the air? I mean, that was probably a lot of this was a head scratcher to me of what was going on on offense. Yeah. The offensive line got banged up. We, you know, we're, 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 we're down linemen left and right, but there are ways to help it, help your quarterback extend plays and look downfield. There are ways, there are things to do, but we just don't do them. And I don't know why I, f- I feel, I literally feel bad for Darren Waller. I really do. I feel worse for Jalen Hyatt because Jalen Hyatt gets on the field, but no one ever looks his way. Isaiah Hodgkins, Hodgins, finally got two receptions. He was like, holy shit, someone threw me the fucking ball. And of course it was Tyrod Taylor. You you talk about, you talk about the lack of ability to hold up against a rush. How many catches do you think our, our, our running backs had in this game? Cause you would think quick dump offs, you know, quick checks, quick flares, you know, have, have it basically be a passing run. Our running backs had two receptions and they were targeted a total of two times. Wondell Robinson was basically a running back out of the backfield with his five receptions for 18 yards. 
And again, he got thrown into coverage a couple times. It's time to think of the, the fact that Joe Shane, Brian Dable, John Mara overestimated this talent. They did. They overestimated what was here. And that's the, that's the scary, that's what scares me. I'm not saying Joe Shane's going to be a failure with the giants, but in year two, the majority of his draft classes have not worked out. And really none of his free agent signings or trades have worked out. And yes, I understand he's had cap restrictions, but you know what? We cannot continuously use that excuse. He had two top five, he had two top 10 picks and he could potentially have whiffed on both of them. And his remark after that draft was, well, it's not that hard to, you know, it's not that hard to figure out who to draft for you. I've got two or two top 10 picks. <laughs> it might have been. It could have potentially been. I I I haven't been this upset with the Giants in a, since since Judge. Since before, you know, and honestly, like I said, I wasn't even really upset with Judge because of the fact I knew what Joe Judge was. I knew what Joe Judge was from day one. I did videos on it all the time. I talked about it. I never shied away from it, but I'm concerned now that, that Dable, Dable is at, Dable is at a crossroads at one in four. He needs to do something and he needs to do. So even if Daniel Jones is healthy, he needs to do something dramatic. And even if you don't let him play the whole game, if Daniel Jones is even healthy, I would start Ty, Tyrod Taylor in Buffalo. Because you need to do something shocking. You need to do something dramatic. Because you're going to be at a crossroads where you could potentially be one in five. And we talked about we've talked about this before. It, it, with the Giants schedule, I I I you go, let's see, you go one and five, maybe you go two and five against the commanders. The Jets just won. So who Lord knows what that game's gonna go. So you could go two and six. You could go, you're playing the Raiders at home. You could be two and seven. You could be two and eight against the Cowboys. You could be two and nine against the commanders. You hopefully you can be three and nine against the Pats. You can be four and 10 against the, the Packers. You, then you have the saints, the Eagles, the Ram, the Saints. Then you have one, two, three, four, five. You potentially at the end of the season, you basically have five games in a row that you could go. zero and five. Daniel Jones, of course, having the MRI today on his neck. We'll probably do a video about that. We're going to do a stream at 7 tonight because I, I, I want to talk to everyone because I, I, want to, I want to talk to the cult because there were so many people in the cult all during preseason, all during the first couple of weeks of the season were basically being called, you're not real giant fans, and if you don't believe in Daniel Jones, just go sit in the back of the bus and let us, and let us real giant fans who know everything about sports talk about this. And when we talked about all the other deficiencies on this team, we got laughed at. We got told we had no clue what we're talking about. Then it all comes to fruition and people are like, well, you know, you know, don't, don't gloat about it. <laughs> Try to be nice about it. Why? You weren't nice about it when, when you thought you were right and we knew we were right. And the wheels just came off the bus. They're not going round and round. They literally fell off the bus. How are we gonna? How, what are we gonna do to get ready for Buffalo? And I think that I think the Buffalo game is now a Sunday night game, so it's a prime time game. They should flex that game, but it's a prime time game, so you know we're losing that. It's an over evaluation of the talent. It's an over evaluation on a quarterback that you are going to be stuck with through two. Th you'll be in year six with Daniel Jones, and you'll still have people saying, "Well, we don't have the pieces around him." No more excuses. Stop the excuses. Take the panties off your head. No more Daniel Jones panty boys. It's time to grow up. And I've said this before. We, we went through a little quarterback desert between, between Kerry Collins and I should say between Phil Sims and Kerry Collins. We went through a little bit of a desert with before Eli Manning, but it happens. You swing and a miss. Sometimes you miss on your franchise quarterback. Most, most NFL franchise, franchise will tell you after you've had that big name quarterback, sometimes you, you a lot, majority of the times you miss on your next quarterback and that's fine, but you cannot continuously keep making the same mistakes over and over again with the same guy because he's just not an NFL quarterback. You have 
all these pronosticators and, and all these analysts who were your former NFL quarterbacks telling you he's not an NFL quarterback. And everyone on Twitter is like, they don't know anything. Open your eyes. Stop thinking with your heart and open your eyes and see what this guy does and how he plays. It's maddening at times. I'm literally getting to the point of madness watching him play because it literally is like a deer in headlights. He looks panicked. And when things go bad and he takes that first big hit, that's when the shit hits the fan. And it goes downhill rapidly from there. It's time. It's just time. Join us tonight for the live stream at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. We're going to talk about this mess. We'll probably have another Daniel. We'll probably have another video out today with Daniel Jones and the MRI. See what that comes back. He's saying it's the same. He's saying it's the same pain, pain he felt last time. Whatever that means. I don't know. I don't really care anymore. Oh, it'll get better. (laughs) The Knicks are starting tonight. (laughs) So, you know what, guys? There's things you need to do. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bug. You want to know why? That'll be awesome.